Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have three Italian wines in front of me. Uh, uh, we're starting in the south and working nor northwards. Um, three different regions, three different grape varieties. First one we have got is uh, Nero Davola, 2012, from Sicily. Uh, and this is under Alster's extra special label. Let's give it a whirl. Ah, a draft of the warm south. Um, it's a slight raisiny character. I mean, if, if you ever want a bit carp about it, it's 2012 and uh, it already feels like uh, uh, roll on 2013. But there's a juicy, plummy, earthy, savoury tomato uh, appeal about it that makes me want to grab a glass and swig it down and throw my glass into the fire and say, bring on the wild boar. Maybe I'd better taste it first. Oh, that's the sort of wine that you want to drink in pints. No, maybe not in pints, but it's just a lovely, warm, rich, generous wine. Um, and um, yes, I mean, we, I'm, I'm filming this in August, although it's a shocking day outside, but a really good uh, hearty food glug. It's, it's like stew wine or um, proper sausages wine or really nice, uh, slow, uh, braised, what, braised whatever dishes. And... Uh, and with that, it's got that classic Italian uh, bit of savoury acidity, um, food friendliness. I, you could almost have a little bit of this by itself, but would come into its own with, uh, with hearty food. And uh, so I'm going to have another glug. We like that. Let's see whether we like wine number two. Barone di Bolaro, um, Ciro Rosso Classico Superiore. So we're in Calabria with this one. And this is made from the Gaglioppo grape. Lovely name for the grape. Let's see if it's a lovely wine. Well, I keep swirling it, and uh, but the, the the main smell that's there is. Um, do, do you have a pair of green flash pumps? The smell of the bottom of green flash pumps, which sounds a bit perverse that someone will go around uh, sniffing the bottom of uh, sports footwear. But um, I, they, they used to have this these, these strange little bits on the bottom that you'd rip off and say, oh yeah, well, I've got this, and uh, in the days when people used to write in pencil, some people used to think, oh, I've got a really good rubber. Uh, but for me, it's a, it's an oak-related thing. They, they, it's what I call rubbery oak. Uh, it feels, I mean, I've only just pulled the cork, so um, maybe the, the, the wine just needs to uh, uncurl, but at the moment it's taking over the wine. Uh, I've, I've watched wines like this, and uh, over the course of... Uh, uh, a few hours, that oak does diminish and the wine does come through. But at the moment, it's hard to get beyond that oak. I'll taste it and see if I can do it. I find it... Um, I find there's interesting things going there. There's a bit of cherries, there's a bit of raspberries, uh, a bit of uh, fresh cherries and dried cherries. Uh, but then this vanilla sheen of oak really takes over and... Uh, ah, dear me. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. I don't hold out as much hope for it and um, certainly uh, I, the Nero Davola probably a, bit, probably a little bit cheaper. Uh, I, that's the one that I prefer of those two. Hey, wine number three. So we're heading up uh, into uh, uh, central Italy and this is uh, Sasso Al Poggio Toscana, uh, 2008 vintage. Uh, a grand wine of excellent taste, a veritable Tuscan treasure. Um, does it say what it's made from? Um, no, um, I've got a feeling that it's, it, there's probably a bit of Sangiovese, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some of the Bordeaux grapes in there somewhere. I may be completely wrong. If I am, I will flash it up on screen for you. Cherry pudding um, and uh, black cherries, but black cherries with a little touch of, um, of, uh, of, of liqueur cherries in there. And the puddingy bit, um, if you make, um, there are the, the, sometimes you, you'll get uh, some fruit, uh, I put a bit of sugar on it and then put cake mix on the top, shove it in the oven. Apple charlotte's the classic one. Uh, if you were to do that with, uh, uh, with cherries and maybe add a little bit of liquor and uh, some, some kirsch, there's almost some, some kirsch character coming through. And if you were to whip it out of the oven slightly too early, so the layer between the, um, uh, the fruit and uh, the cake mix, uh, well, the, the cake mix hadn't quite uh, hadn't quite solidified, so it was a bit, as we say in the north, thoddy. Uh, there's, a, there's something of that, that slight egginess that you get in you'd get in the sponge, um, but mixed with the the juiciness and the slight liqueur-like edge of the fruit. Nice wild, juicy wine. Um, it's got um, it's, there's um, a modern bit. 
in that, uh, that sometimes Italian wine can be almost too volatile for its own good. Uh, here, it feels like they've cleaned up um, any anything that was going to go potentially uh, woo too woo, but they've not done it too much. Uh, they've not over polished it, so there's still a little bit of earthy, rustic character in there, um, and uh, the fruit has not been over oh yeah over glossed, uh, so that there's a heartiness and there's that little bit a little bit of rasp. And alcohol wise, it feels like it's it's quite a bold wine, fourteen percent. But um, the fruit's not gone into uh, the jamminess. It's just on the right side. If it has gone any, anywhere near um, not freshness, it's into that cooked fruit rather than into the overripe and raisiny fruit. Um, I like the first and I like the third. I am really confused about the Chiro in the middle, so uh, I will report back on that. But um, otherwise I'll be trying to find some Bistecca alla Fiorentina to uh, polish off with the wine number three. See you soon.